What is up, Poke Peeps and Masters? It is Russ here, Poke Russ here, and we are back, back for another Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duel video. This time we got a deck profile. We're gonna start doing deck profiles for this uh, amazing game on the channel. So we're gonna go over a couple decks that. Well, today we're gonna go over one deck that I think is pretty strong coming out of the first meta, which the first meta is just the two starter decks mixed and matched together. But I think this is one of your strongest options going into. Like leading up to set one, and I think this this will only get stronger with set one because what we do know about set one is six card set. Uh, we do know the Arcana uh, Knights will be in it, like Kings, Queen, Jack, and Arcana Knight Fusion. They'll be in it, and we know Ishizu's getting a new skill, Yui's getting a new skill, and Bones is getting three. So I think this deck will come in plenty handy in the next upcoming meta, as long as as well as this one too, because one Ishizu might get a new Gravekeeper spell, two. Uh, Gravekeepers are strong against zombies, so that's a plus. And two, any almost any support that Yugi gets, unless it's for normal monsters, it can universally almost be used by most spellcasters, so it's pretty nice for them too. So I think this is one of the best decks going into the new format, but we're actually using a Yugi skill today. So this, is, this seems like a basic skill, and there's other skills that you could use, but I think this is just, this will give you the oomph, because everybody's going to be focusing on the last gambles, the... the uh, destiny draws all that kind of stuff that you just have the you, you just have the buff buffer that'll get you over what you need to so we have the power of dark skill uh, basic skill for UV and duel links and in here um, all this goes into your field spell card zone all spell, fiend and spellcaster monsters on the field gain 200 attack and defense all fairies lose 200 attack and defense the fairy parts not at all relevant but the spellcasters is super relevant so we're going into gravekeepers so we're gonna start off with Two Legion of Fiend Jester. This is act this isn't a gravekeeper, but uh pretty solid monster. We're not using it for a second skill. We actually have no normal monsters in this deck, but uh it's a fact that you can sit there and just um summon it and then or immediately tribute summon over it. It's pretty strong. Um you can you can uh only pretty much tribute that for one thing in here, or if you end up going into like a bigger play, you can do that for other things in here. But it's still pretty strong, it's pretty nifty, and I definitely suggest that that's why it's only at two. So it allows you for a nice first turn, uh, well, it allows you for like a first turn chief play or something like that, which is super nice. Next, we have three copies of Gravekeeper Recruiter. Pretty solid card as well. When, when this card you control is sent to the graveyard, add one Gravekeeper with 1500 power or 1500 defense or less from your grave to your hand, which is uh, actually a decent amount. Almost every, actually every Gravekeeper can add from your deck to your hand, which is pretty snazzy. So when you get rid of, when you sacrifice this or when this is destroyed by battle or anything like that, it can instantly proc, which is super nice. A good play, I'll show you some cool plays with this later on. Next, we have three copies of Gravekeeper Priestess. Gravekeeper Priestess, if you have no other field spell in play, this card is treated as Necro Valley. Usually you'll have Power of Dark unless they get rid of it, but that's not the important part, is that all Gravekeepers gain 200 attack and defense. So either way, uh, when these two are on field together, all of your spellcasters are gaining 400 extra attack. So this puts this up to a 1400, this is a 1600, so on and so forth, which is absolutely insane. And this is going to get you uh, to be over some of those numbers that you're questioning like, hey, my opponent is playing Blue Eyes, we need to do some combo plays to get over that Blue Eyes. But this deck can usually power through and kind of knock out your opponent before they, they pull off their whole Blue Eyes shenanigan tree. Um, they do have a skill to help them, but uh, that's, you know what I mean. So, three, grave, three grave, Gravekeeper Priestess. You have two copies of Gravekeeper's Chief. This is one of your tributes in the deck. You're running four tributes in the stack. Uh, if you can only control one face-up Gravekeeper Chief. Your graveyard is unaffected by Necro Valley, and when this card is tribute summoned, you can target one Gravekeeper in your uh, graveyard and special summon it. So, uh, obvious play if you are. If it's later in the game, you can... This is pretty much a... You play... You instantly sack into this, you are born one of your Gravekeepers, right? Or, another pro play is, you go, you have Recruiter already on field, you sack it off to summon Gravekeeper, you get your search, then this automatically special summons this back to the field. Pretty snazzy, and you, you when it decides, you'll obviously get a second search. So you're pretty plussing off that, which is absolutely crazy. Good, good combo, good synergy, um, pretty amazing. So two of those. And then we have the big boss monster of the deck, we have Gravekeeper's Oracle. So, you're rarely going to tribute three monsters off for this, but you possibly can if you need to in a scenario. Once you get, like, if hypothetically you were able to uh, have um, 
like, like two monsters on the field or something. Like the way the way you tribute off three monsters is is kind of insane. You're probably you're probably already in the lead or whatever. But if you're able to do that with a combination of cards, uh, with like golden apples and stuff like that, which we'll get into later, um, you can activate all of his effects. Usually, you're probably only going to activate one or none if you special summon this off another card. But you need to tribute three monsters or one gravekeeper monster to summon. Not set this card. When this tribute summon, you activate any of the effect, or you activate any of these effects and resolve them in sequence, up to the number of uh, gravekeeper monsters tributed for this summon. So the first effect is uh, gains attack equal to the combination of all monsters tributed summon times a hundred. So this could be a twenty-one hundred if you tribute one. Blah blah. blah. Um, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. All monsters currently lose or your opponent controls currently lose 200 or 2000 attack and defense which is pretty freaking strong so he's your big boss monster he's 2000 power i don't know why my things kind of getting blurry but he's 2000 attack uh 1500 defense pretty nice and he's your big boss monster he destroys your opponent's backfield if he, if possible he just he gets powered up and all that kind of stuff so, going into uh, the spell and trap cards, you have two copies of Shard of Greed. This is pretty much your extra draw engine in the deck. You go in, and th this is why you can switch this to the if you want to do like Destin, the super, uh, like, final draw or whatever. Uh, the game's going to be slow enough that Shard of Greed will be relevant, and just plussing off those extra cards will be super nice. You're playing one copy of Wonder Wand for that extra early draw, um, plus. It, it, it can power up stuff. So like, say you're, you're not going to use the one power up stuff so uh, that often, but um, you can make super pro plays. Like, if you're if you're in a nice advantageous position, you say you have you have Gravekeeper's Recruit on in play. You instantly tribute it off for Gravekeeper's Chief. You get your search. You special summon Recruiter back. You play Wonder One on Recruiter. Sack it off. Get your second search plus two cards. Absolutely crazy. And it allows, it allows once you have all the buffs of like Power of Dark, your Priestess and all that, you can use this to pop up and get a little, little bit boost in case you have to take on one of those blue eyes. Usually you're going to want to switch to defense mode and take it on that way, but uh, there there is a combination where you can... Uh, so if you tribute off... If you tribute off one... Uh, if you tribute off like Recruiter for this, he becomes a 2100. Power of Dark increases him by 200. If you have uh, Priestess on field another 200, then Wonder One allows him up to 3,000. Pretty strong. And then we're going to have to comment with it, or you call me with it. So it's pretty good there. Uh, next, we're going into traps. We have two Magician Circle. This is your main fuel of the deck. Uh, so if you if you go aggro and use this, or if your opponent's playing Magician or spells or Spellcasters as well, you can uh, use Magician Circle in, in defensive. To let you special summon somebody on your side of the field. Pretty nice. Gets allows those recruiter, recruiter searches to go off even more. And allows you to spam the field with creatures that you can sacrifice if you want to, like, Oracle, right? So you only need two creatures on a field to magician to circle an Oracle and do all that kind of crazy stuff. We have Windstorm of Aquita, one of those. Uh, pretty strong card switches on the battle position of all face up monsters your opponent controls. So, um, this can be used um, offensively and defensively. Obviously, defensively, if your opponent's going to coming in with a strong monster, you just want to switch his monsters to defense mode so you can go a little bit deeper uh, or a little bit harder onto them next turn. Or if you need to protect your guys from like a blue eye, switch to defense mode, only has 2500 defense. All that kind of crazy stuff. Super strong card. You might even think about upping this up by one, but I personally prefer this other card that I decided to take an extra copy of. So, we have one copy of Windstorm. Um, like I said, you can also use it offensively by, like, say they're setting up their blue eyes plays and all that kind of stuff. They already have, they already have their, uh, Lore of D on field. You just want to switch that back to attack mode so you can punch it right in the face. Because you've got, like, a big, huge beater and that's what'll cause you to win the game. Flip over Windstorm, switch to active mode, boom. Boom. And last but not least, this is, this is honestly really for the blue eyes matchup, because I think that's, that might be this deck's hardest matchup. Or even the Dark Magician matchup, because you, you have a lot of the same cards uh, being used between the two decks. So, like, uh, Magician Circle and stuff is going to backfire a lot. So, like I said, you could use uh, Windstorm to switch all their guys to the defense mode. Or, I like Golden Apples. This allows you to play have early game set up where you just set a card in, uh, on your turn. And they go in with, for, with for a really strong play. They attack with their strongest guy first. 
Um, which you're going to learn over the time of the game. If you're attacking directly, always attack with the weakest guy first. But, um, Golden Apples punishes those players that do attack with their strong guys first. If they, if they like, instantly second turn, double tribute into Blue Eyes White Dragon. Uh, they attack you. You survive it because you have 1,000 life points left. Then you summon one Malice Token, 3,000 attack, three, or 2,500 defense. Or, I'm sorry, 3,000 defense as well. Sorry. Sorry. Um, pretty strong. Allows you to kind of commie into that Blue Eyes or a mixture of different things. Because it is a Fiend, it does get an extra field power bonus. So that will put up to 3,200, which will eat that Blue Eyes in the face. And that's why I think this is really strong. Uh, it'll commie with, obviously... Like, they'll punch you in the face with the, their Dark Magician 2700 because it's getting boosted. This will come come out as a 2900. So, I think that's pretty cool. I think Golden Apples is very good, especially in, in this lead-up meta to the first set. It's one of those cards I think is going to decrease over time, but in this first meta, I think it's going to be super awesome. So, that is the first deck profile for Speed Dueling that I'm going to do. Um, what would you guys like to see for the next deck profile? Would you like to see... Um, there's a couple different decks I would like to do. If you have any comments, let me know, in the, or if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section down below. And yeah, hope you guys like speed dueling. We'll, we'll do some more pack up or uh, profiles over the next week, months, stuff like that. We'll do some IRL dueling where you get to watch us have a couple matches with these speed dueling decks and all that kind of stuff leading up to the first set. If you guys like this, like I said, hit that like and subscribe button. We're on our way to a thousand subscribers. So if you want to support me, let me know. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day. Poking Rust out. Peace.